Hi, and welcome to Holistic Movement with me, episode 38, I believe. And I thought we'd start just like this, in this uncompromising position. And why is that? Because I thought we'd do isometric, start with an isometric exercise. And isometric exercises are amazing for the body, especially if you're injured and you're afraid of going into certain ranges of motion that induces pain. And in this position, hopefully you're not feeling pain, but if you are, if your legs are too wide, you can bring them in a little bit nearer to you because we want to strengthen the inner thighs. And if you were like me before, or you have the mindset that I always got to stretch my inner thighs, they're so tight. And not necessarily. They could be tight eccentrically, meaning that the tissue is just being pulled long continuously. And so we need to strengthen them a little bit, give them strength and flexibility, which equals mobility. I'm doing this specifically for my right knee because I've had a torn meniscus for over 20 years and been trying to figure it out for that period of time. And I came to this revelation a few weeks ago, playing pickleball, that I need to strengthen my inner thighs more, so then my inner thighs create stability for the medial aspect of my knee. So I'm doing this for selfish reasons. Anyway, make sure that your feet are straight and I'm gonna push my toes down. And then when I do that, I feel the tension created within my inner thighs. And I'm gonna pretend like I'm sucking, and this is gonna sound graphic, but pretend your butthole is sucking up air into it. And so you're engaging the pelvic floor as well. So not only is this for the inner thigh strength, but also to strengthen the pelvic floor. And so many people that I've worked on, thousands of people have weak pelvic floors, especially for you women out there who have given birth and you have weak pelvic floor muscles, this is going to help. So I'm just going to try to relax my arms here. And I'm going to close my eyes and I'm really contracting. I'm not using 100% of contractionary force. I'm using about maybe 80%. Can you do that? And then can you concentrate on your breath now? So I'm thinking of my abdominal region, how to expand it circumferentially and then squeeze it in circumferentially. Okay, let's relax for one second. Let's bring the legs back together. We stayed for a long period of time while I was yapping. I'm just going to rest here. I'm going to back up just a little bit. I'm afraid my head's going out of frame. Let's go back to again and let's try a different angle. You don't have to go so wide. Or if you just went wide, let's bring it in a little bit. So we, we can work different angles. And that's what's great about, great about isometric exercises. So as I'm talking, let's squeeze in. So I'm imagining this triangle and I'm the top of the triangle and I'm just... <clears throat> yes. I'm squeezing. We're just going to stay for about 30 seconds. And sorry, I don't have a timer. I'm just going to judge it by how the rooster crows. There's a rooster right near here. Now, at the same time, while you're listening to me, can you also concentrate on your body and be consciously aware of, I'm holding tension in my body, but I'm also listening to the external world. Can you have both of those going on at the same time? Okay, relax. Let's bring the feet back together. We're gonna to do one more set. I've talked, to my, I've talked to a lot of clients recently about this when they've come in because they create a lot of tension when they're in stressful situations in their body. Okay, let's go. Let's squeeze in. <clears throat> you can try a different position of your feet as well different from what we just previously did. I'm relaxing, I'm relaxing my face because I just tensed it when I was contracting, contracting those inner thigh muscles. And now I'm gauging my quads. So I'm, we're making this a functional movement exercise. It's not just concentrating on one part, part of the body. You cannot isolate and think that I'm only gonna concentrate on these muscles. The body doesn't work that way. So let's work the butt muscles, let's tighten those, the quads, the inner thighs, my abdominal region, your abdominal region. And keep listening to me and concentrating your body at the same time. 
when you're in a stressful situation, for example, now you're creating stress in your body, can you calm the mind and the breath? When you finish this class, maybe you go to work and you're having an engaged conversation, maybe a debate with someone, who knows, and as you're listening to that person, can you relax your body or feel tension in your body and let that go with your exhale? We'll stay for about five more seconds. And relax. Let's lie on our backs. Let's relax here. And again, while you're listening to me coach you, can you be consciously aware and feel your body in space and how it's touching the floor? And notice where and if you're holding tension. Maybe you're still holding tension from that isometric contraction. Can you let that go? And if you can't, maybe tighten those muscles really tightly and then just let go. Okay. Stay on your back. But if you want to come up and take a look at what I'm doing, please feel free to. We're going to try to strengthen the psoas muscle. And not only the psoas muscle, but also the glutes, other hip flexors, the QL, the quadratus lumborum, the back muscles. And I call this the psoas push. Now I took my shirt off so then you can see how my hips are differentiating in comparison to the lower back. If you're unsure what differentiation means, I made a video of it and hopefully you can go check that out. Plug, plug, plug. Okay, differentiating the lower, the pelvis from the lower back. Simple explanation, if you don't want to watch that other video, is that we tr want to teach the brain that the pelvis can move independently and not bring the lower back along too much. So then it has proper mobility. Okay, so we're gonna bring our arms out to the side. You see from this camera angle, and I'm going to, I'll show you from a few angles. I'm gonna bring my legs up into a tabletop position. My lower legs are relaxed, even though they're holding a little bit of tension to create this 90 degree angle, okay? And then we're just gonna do a warm up of just bringing the, swinging the legs to the left or right. Let me move my mic just a little bit there. I'm gonna actually place it on the floor. And we're just swinging back and forth. We've done this one before in previous episodes where you're using the obliques, the psoas, lower back muscles, the glutes, everything to help swing back to the left and right. So if I, my legs go to the right, my left obliques bring the knees back. I'll show you from this angle, this camera here. So the legs go to the left, bring them back. Imagine there's a string. And they go to the right, bring them back. We're just doing this to warm up these muscles. We're just going to do a couple more. Okay. Drop the knees for a second. All right. Then I'm going to, can you see me here? I'm going to bring, bring these up and pretend there's someone right here standing in front of you and they have their hand on your right knee. Now you're going to direct the movement from your right glutes here. Okay. And I'm thinking, how can my glutes and my psoas here push this knee up, but while relaxing the right lower leg? So I'm initiating the movement. Can you see all this? My right side of my lower back here in the front, my obliques, all the four layers of my abdominal region, my butt, and I'm pushing that upward and then bringing it back, pushing it upward, bringing it back. Let's do a couple more. This can be tiring. Now you may not have, hang on, let's drop the knees, let's relax here. You keep resting if you wanna come up and sit. I'm gonna show you from a few different angles here. Okay, I'm gonna do this right side again while you watch if you would like to. You can try it again though. This can be really, really challenging for a lot of people how to isolate and only move this portion. Or maybe you're only able to move just a little bit. Okay, come back to the center, relax here. Let's show you from this other angle. I'm gonna bring the legs up again. I'm gonna bring both knees to my right and I'm pushing up with my left, my left butt, my QL, my psoas on my left. And this side's a lot smoother for me. It's easier. I don't have as many restrictions. It helped that I did a major release of my left side of my body yesterday. 
but that's another story. Okay, let me show you from this camera angle. You can stop at any time. And then I'll do one last angle here. Just show you from all these different angles. If you want, if you're having difficulty, you can place your left hand on your left butt cheek and tell the brain, hey, turn on. Hey, you, I know you, I know you. Okay, let's come back to the center. Let's rest. And after you close your eyes, what do you notice about your butt cheeks and your lower back and your abdominal region? What do you notice going on there? Okay, let's bend our right knees, bring our left arm next to our left ear, roll on over to your left hand side. We're going to use that right hand to push ourselves up. And we're going to come into a dynamic push up. And <clears throat> I really love this position. I was showed it years ago by one of my amazing teachers, Andrew Nichols. And what we're going to concentrate on is, on is the transition when we move from one forearm to the other. So I'll show you from this camera angle. I'm going to come onto my knees, okay, and onto my forearms. My arms are kind of like in a, not kind of like, they are in a triangle shape. One thing that is difficult is when we get in this position, we let our lats and our rib cage just collapse. That creates a lot of problems in your rotator cuff muscles and other muscles in particular. And so I'm going to engage my abdominal region from a circumferential manner to not let my rib cage just drop. And I'm going to push the back of my rib cage up into my shoulder blades. Okay. Now, then I'm going to transition from my right forearm. I'm just going to, let's try this first. Just lean a little bit to your left and right here. Shift to your left forearm and then your right forearm. It's more so your elbows than the forearm. Keep your abdominal region engaged. And my back is a little bit rounded. That's okay. So I'm just feeling the transition from my left forearm to my right forearm. Then I'm going to transition, I'm going to shift to my right forearm, and I'm going to engage my right obliques, my right abdominal region, and my quads, and I'm going to place my left hand on the floor, and I'm going to push down with my right forearm and my left hand, transition now to my left hand, and then bring my right arm there. And then I'm going to come down on my left forearm, but before I do that, Shift a little bit to your right. Feel the transition there and what muscles have to be activated. Those right obliques again. Then I'm going to come down into my left forearm and my left elbow. And then my left obliques turn on. I'm purposely doing this really slowly so you can feel what muscles need to be activated to help the transition between the left side and the right side of your body. Now this time I'm going to shift to my left forearm. And my right hand comes up. Feel the transition between your left forearm and your right hand. Push up with your right hand, and then you're going to shift back to your left, and then come back to neutral. I'm going to show you from this angle with this camera here. So I'm going to shift again to my left. Sorry, to my left here. I'm going to use my right hand to push up alongside continuously. At the same time, my left elbow and my right hand and push up and come up into this preparatory pose for the push up. Sorry, my mic's giving me problems here. Then, I feel like I have Crystal Gale hair, hair there. For those of you who know Crystal Gale, then I'm going to shift again to my, let's shift to the left, bring my right forearm down, then my left one. We're going to do a little bit faster. Then shift to the left, come on up. And then shift to the right, come on down to the right forearm, left forearm comes down. Okay? And you can just alternate back and forth. Get a rhythm going here. Which forearm do you want to come down onto? 
or transition up to. There's no particular order. But try to switch back and forth between the left and right. The whole time, you're engaging your abdominal region to protect your lower back. Now, you may be saying, Rob, this is fairly easy. Can I do this with straight legs? Sure, feel free to. I enjoy this one because it's way easier to maintain the structure of your upper body. I'm thinking from my knees all the way up to my collarbones, my shoulders, how do I maintain core stability? I'm going to turn back this way. Let's do a few more. And how do my obliques and my abdominal region help me transition? and shift from one hand to the other. If you're unsure, slow it down again. The slower you go, the more consciously aware, and you can feel your body more. And which muscles need to be activated to help you transition. Let's do one more. Okay, let's lie on our backs. Let's rest here. And then what do you notice? From your knees all the way up to your collarbones and maybe your neck, especially if you were straining your neck when you were doing this position, and I invite you to practice this position, can you do it without tensing your neck so much? I'm letting my abdominal region fall. I'm letting my pelvic floor fall, relax, and just fall into the floor. Okay, let's bend our right knees. Roll, bring your left arm next to your left ear. Roll on over to your left-hand side. Let's come on up. We're going to finish with what we've been doing the past couple weeks, the one-legged lunge here in the squat with a rotation. Because the first time we did it, we did extension, then we did coronal plane movement. Remember, we were going to the left and right, side flexion, and now we're going to do rotation. So I'll show you from a few angles, as I always do. I'm going to show you my right foot, and hopefully you can see that to where it's straight. I'm not curling the toes under because I don't want to defend on the bed. <laughs> Hello. Depend on the foot for balance. I want to depend on the whole leg and the hips to help me maintain balance. I'm going to bring my hips forward so I can get that full extension into my psoas muscle here and all the hip flexors, other hip flexors. And I'm going to extend my spine as much as I can. Okay. We're just going to start up with the warm up first, just with extension. Just do a few of these, keeping that right butt cheek tight and Really trying to feel and consciously be aware of from the top of my right foot all the way to, and maybe my fingertips are going out of frame here, all the way up to my fingertips, can I imagine and feel a one, a one, one continuous line of extension? So I'm lengthening the whole right side of my body. My left side is... My left leg is kind of keeping me from doing that, but I'm being consciously aware of using consciously aware numerous times. <laughs> okay, now side flexion. Let me face the camera so you can see this. Now I'm going to <clears throat> lean to the left and right. And how's your breath during this? Is it more difficult to breathe when you go to the left or to the right? I'm thinking of when I lean to the left and right, I'm ex exhaling, inhaling and switching, exhaling, lengthening. Okay, now rotation. So same breath here, inhaling, transitioning. And when I transition, 
what do I have to fire? What muscle groups do I have to fire to maintain stability? Feeling that. And if I cannot rotate my rib cage, I'm not going to overcompensate with my arms. My arms are trying to be as relaxed as possible. Keep going. I'm just switching positions so you can kind of see me from this angle too. So what happens a lot is when we can't reach our end range, for example, the rib cage, my arms and shoulders are going to overcompensate and that's when you injure yourself. So what if you just think of the movement coming from the rib cage and you're relaxing the shoulders? Let's do one more. Okay, now place the hands on the floor first. Bring your pelvis back really slowly. Bring that left leg back. Let's line our backs just for a tick, just to rest here. And what do you feel now? If you were to compare the left side and the right side of your body, do you notice any difference here? I do. I feel a lot more activity in the right side of my body as compared to the left. Okay, let's bend our right knees. You can bring that left arm next to your left ear if you want. You don't have to push yourself up. Let's switch to the other side. So I'm gonna bring my left foot forward and my, sorry, my right foot forward and my left leg back. I confuse my left and my right num have numerous times and will continue to do so. And I'm just coming right into extension. I'm keeping this left butt cheek tight. And in previous videos, I like to cop a feel on my back and my butt so then I can teach my brain that it exists. To dispel that sensory amnesia that I've mentioned before. I'm telling the brain, hey you, I know you, I know you. No, you're not angry at him. You're just feeling. Yep. So I'm feeling from the top of my left foot, my toes, all the way up to my left fingertips. How can I extend that whole line? Okay, now let's do, sorry, went right into rotation. Let's go coronal. Side flexion, we're gonna to lean to the left, lean to the right, and it's my rib cage. Hopefully it's your rib cage. And can you sink into your hip joints a little bit more? Can you let your pelvis drop a little bit more? So then that will help lengthen your spine more. Okay, now rotation. Appreciation for the rotation with no inebriation. These birds around me are really going at it. How can this rib cage rotate? Let's do two more. Okay, place the hands on the floor. Bring your pelvis back first, then bring that right leg back, and then let's slowly lie on our backs. And we're done for the day. And as I let out a, a breath out of my mouth, sigh. I'm letting my exhale help my body sink into the floor more. And also I'm feeling how is the whole back part of my body, the back of my hands, back of my arms, et cetera, et cetera, and the back of my head, down to my heels. How can I let those portions of my body feel how they're touching the floor, but also how they fall into the floor and completely let go of tension. Please stay in this position. After I say, see you next week, please stay in the position for a little bit longer to let your nervous system feel these new patterns.
of relaxation. See you next week.